Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. Now today we're going to be forging a knife out of a railroad spike. But not this one right here. This is a typical railroad spike that you would find along the railroad tracks. Uh, you could buy them off of eBay. Uh, you may find one laying around in some antique stuff. This is just a regular railroad spike. Now this is what they call a high carbon spike. But that doesn't mean much at all when it comes to knife making. As railroad spikes like this, no matter what you do, no matter what you get outside of welding a piece of high carbon steel in for an edge and forging it out, these will not hold an edge like a knife will at all. These are mainly forged into novelty items for people that worked on the railroad or people that just want something different. They don't have one. But as for a knife, using it and everything, they don't work great at all. They're, they're pretty much, you can sharpen them, but they're going to get dull quickly and they're just not going to perform well. So. Like I said, this is stamped high carbon, but it, it basically is still on the upper end of what would be a mild steel. Now, this one on the other hand right here is an actual high carbon spike. I got this from Atlas Knife and Tool. Uh, they did not send this to me. I bought this with my own money. It cost $10. I believe they're listed at $9.99. I think after shipping, this cost me right at, I think shipping was $10 on it. I don't remember. I'll look it up and see. But this is a 1080 high carbon steel railroad spike. Has their stamp on the end of it here. So this is actually made from real knife steel. So the knife that I forged out of this will actually be able to hold an edge like any knife out of 1080 steel. It'll maintain that edge. We can get it razor sharp. You can use it for stuff and it will work out as a regular knife would. Will it be a practical knife? Probably not because it's still going to have a steel handle and be somewhat heavy, but it will be a much more functional knife than using one of these right here. And so I'm going to take this and toss it into the forge and we're going to forge it probably just into a regular old knife. I'll also show you the way that I do these knives. A lot of people start out with twisting the handle first and then forging out the blade. And I've heard people explain that. They're like, I do that because once the blade is done, I'm pretty much finished. I do it the opposite. I forge the blade out of what I want and then I'll draw the handle portion out and then twist it at the end. My reasoning for that is because if the handle's twisted before you start forging the blade, it's, you, you could possibly bend or dent up your uh, twist on your handle, you know, mess it up to where it doesn't look that good. And if you do it at the very end, it's the last thing you do. So you're not going to be handling it much after that. And so that's the reason I do that. I also use a press. And so I will draw this portion out first and then draw the handle out and then go into forging the blade, then twist it and we'll be good. So let's get this tossed in the forge, get it up the temperature and let's make a knife out of it. I'm coming here with the cross paint on my hammer. Let's get some whip hammered into this.
done here with the cross pane is I just worked mainly right here along the middle of this and pushed this edge down because the edge is still really thick. So when I draw the rest of this down, it'll give us a nice wide blade. I'll also come back and address the spine too because the spine is really thick. I'll probably work on getting the spine addressed next, kick this point down, and then I will start forging in the bevels, which should bring the point back up. So here's how it turned out. I did have one spot, Let's see if I can get the, the camera to focus on it here, that showed up in the handle right here. This was like a little, almost like it tore. Let's see if I can zoom in even better as far as the camera goes, but you can kind of see that little, it was like a nick out of it right there. That was a little spot that tore but it didn't seem to do it anywhere else. 
and the blade looks good so I'm not worried about that so so yeah, this little spot there I'll be sure to kind of knock that down a little bit whenever I clean this up I always try to knock the sharp edges off of these anyway with a scotch right belt so we'll clean that up but yeah we're finished up so we'll let this cool down and then take it over to the grinder get it profiled and cleaned up and then run it through some thermal cycling and then we'll heat treat it and then finish grind it all right so now that everything's cooled down i'm going to get on the grinder and clean this profile up get some bevels roughed in pretty thin on the edge still so i may not rough them in too much maybe just get them up to about right here or so and then we're going to take it over and get it quenched get tossed in the tempering oven this being 1080 quenching it's pretty easy it's a pretty uh, user-friendly steel to work with so let's get it cleaned up and get after it So everything went through the quench well, no warping, no cracking, got it tempered. I did two two-hour cycles at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And so now I'm going to jump on the grinder and get these bevels finished. And then we're going to throw in some ferric chloride and see if we got a, a, a hardening line on there, a quench line. So let's get after it.
So I've got all the hand sanding done. I'm going to give it a dunk in some ferric chloride. See how it turns out. All right. So if you're wondering if this would take a nice hamon, I figured it would be in 1080. But there you go. Nice hardened edge here. Nice and soft on the spine. I'm going to get this cleaned up and go ahead and take the angle grinder to the twist here and get it cleaned up with the wire wheel and then get this sharpened and we'll be finished up. All right, there's how it turned out. It's pretty cool that they offer these spikes in 1080. I mean, even if you didn't want to forge a railroad spike knife, you could buy the spike and cut the end off and forge it into a bar or forge an integral with it. So that's pretty neat. Atlas Knife and Tool, check them out. I'll put the link in the description down below. I appreciate you all for checking this video out. Hit that sub button if you would. Ring the notification bell to notify the most content of the posts, and I'll see you soon. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.